we tried every form of public transportation in Korea and here's what we learned. In a country that's just a quarter of the size of California but houses over 50 million people, the use of public transportation is incredibly prevalent. In fact, it's entirely possible to live your entire life in Korea without ever needing to own a car. You literally can get to any destination you want. During our one month stay, we set out to traverse the entire country with nothing more than a credit card and a tea money. I'll explain what that is later. As you keep watching, I'll delve into the various aspects, including the subway system, how to book a train, when to opt for a taxi, and more. By the end of this video, you'll be well prepared to navigate the intricate web of South Korea's public transportation. Awesome! So let's get started. We'll begin with navigation. The first place to start is to choose the correct apps. I mainly use Google Maps throughout my trip. Google's sophisticated AI was able to guess what words I was trying to spell and give me suggestions. The routes they would recommend weren't always the most accurate, so just be aware of that. But since this is what I primarily used, here's how it works. Currently, I'm not at Korea, so I'm just selecting Subon Park as my starting location. Then I'll type in Gwangjang Market. You see how it suggested a spelling for me? I get a list of routes to take. I usually select the first one on the list. Because the subway is easier to navigate, I would check it so I wouldn't get any bus routes. Then I would literally zoom into the map and try my best to follow the lines. Of course, I can't just directly cut across because I'm not a bird. So I end up zigzagging my way to the departing subway station. While I'm on the train, I just pay close attention to my location until I reach my final destination. Another important tip is to have my external battery so you don't run out of power. Otherwise, you'll be doomed for eternity. Another app we found useful was the Subway app. It has an entire map of Seoul's subway system, along with up-to-date schedules and the ability to pick a departure and arrival station. We used this whenever we lost the GPS signal, or Google Maps had a brain fart. And although this has nothing to do with navigation, the Google Translate app was great for reading signs. We just point our camera on a word and it would automatically translate it. Crazy technology. So most train stations are accessible for strollers. And they have elevators. Oops, whoa, watch out. So now that you're at a subway station, you'll need to purchase your fare. The most convenient way to pay is by getting a T-Money card, which you can buy at a convenience store for 5,000 won. T-Money is like a rechargeable gift card that can be scanned for entry, and the balance will be automatically deducted. And in a lot of subways or train stations, they'll have these uh, vending machines, ticket vending machines. Okay, so in these ticketing machines, uh, this is how it works. First you select your language and then you select your destination. And so destination is uh, wherever you want to end up. So we're just pick back sock. And then you select how many tickets do you want. Do you want for how many adults, how many children. And it's going to give you a price. So let's just pick one and two children. Confirm. And then it's going to give you a price. Now, for every ticket you buy is a $500 or 500 won deposit that when you return the, the ticket, it's actually going to give you that back. So then just pay the total fare uh, and then a card should come out somewhere here and then you just take that. So here is the um, station where you return your ticket and then your deposit should come back. Now, if you had a T-Money card, all you have to do is reload your transit card and so you place it here and then you can select how much money you want to put in i'm going this is how it works and uh hopefully i don't mess this up but you just tap it what oh shoot best maybe here okay and then i enter 
And if you're curious, a subway ticket looks like this. Only resort to buying tickets if you need to, but I would highly recommend using a T-Money. Another thing to note is that different cities have different ticketing systems. So I gotta, I gotta point this out, but Daegu doesn't use the same T-Money system as in Seoul. So these type of machines don't work. So you have to refill your card from a convenience store. We did it at 7-Eleven and E-Mart. Luckily, Busan's ticketing machine was the same as Seoul. Now you need to find your train. Each subway line is color-coded along with a number. You can check the number and color of your subway on Google Maps. Then you'll see signs with arrows pointing to where you can find the stop. Once you've located the subway stop, you need to know what direction to take. And of course, I like to look at this map and always make sure where I'm at right here. It always indicates and then the direction that it's going. You can find these maps along the glass walls. Some etiquette you'll need to be aware of is that there's designated spots for pregnant women, handicapped, and the elderly. If the train is not full, feel free to sit down. But once things get crowded, don't be evil and give up your seat to those who need them. Riding the subway is a convenient way to explore the city, but it can be challenging as well, especially with little kids. If you take it during busy times, it'll feel like the worst mosh pit in the world. But compared to driving, this really is the best way to get around. So I learned something new today. When you're using your Google Maps, it does give you where you should exit. In this case, it says exit via one, and here is the exit one. So a lot of times in these stations, it's kind of confusing where to exit. You just gotta follow the yellow sign. And uh, make sure when you're at the station, watch out for these type of charging cables. That way if you're out of power, you can just plug in your phone and you can charge it while you're at the station. Another great thing about subway stations is that they all have shops and restaurants inside. And before I forget, let's talk prices. General price is 1,400 won for card entry and 1,500 for tickets. Teenagers between 13 and 18 are 800 and 1,500. Children between 6 and 12 are 500. And under 6 are free. Also, if you purchase a tea money for your kids, you'll need to ask an employee to register a birthday for them so they can receive those discounts. The next most popular form of public transit are buses. Although I tried to only take the subway, there's quite a few attractions in Korea that you can only get to by bus. There are two types of buses, long distance and short distance. The long distance bus connects major cities and you have to purchase your tickets which you can get at the terminal. Although these are more comfortable, they take much longer than a train. So if you don't have much time, I'd skip these entirely. The short distance buses only travel within a city. In Seoul, they're color coded. The blue buses connect to different districts. The green buses connect to subway stations and blue bus routes in residential areas. The small green buses travel short routes within a district or neighborhood. The yellow buses goes in a circulation route in the city center. And the red buses connect the city with the surrounding areas. But because I was using Google Maps, I didn't have to know any of this hotwash. In Google Maps, you can find your bus stop location, but you need to pay attention to the direction the bus will be going. I look at this little icon to check for that. Once we get there, we need to look for our bus number and when it'll arrive. Most stops have electronic signs that shows the schedule. Uh, all the buses, all the bus stops here have a schedule, so you can see how far your bus is. In this case, I'm looking for this one. So three minutes, three minutes away. When you get on the bus, enter through the front door and have your T-Money card ready to scan. You can also pay with cash. That would just hold up the line, you jerk. We took this bus midday, so there were plenty of seats. During rush hour, expect for it to be standing room only. But from our experience, it wasn't crowded 90% of the time. Knowing where to get off is not as easy to figure out on buses, so I track my progress by looking at Google Maps. When you're about to approach your stop, press this red button. 
Then you scan your T-Money card one more time and exit through the back. Buses do have a fixed price, and it varies depending on which color you take. And like the subway, there are three tiers. An adult price for 19 and up, teenager's price from age 13 to 18, children's price for age 6 to 12, and under 6 are free. And if you have a T-Money card, you get a discount, and transfers are free as long as you take the next bus within 30 minutes. At this bus stop, we've uh, caged in our family because she keeps getting out and going to the street. I'm guessing during the summer when it's hot, this is like an air-conditioned space to wait for the bus. Look at them, so comfortable in there. Can you believe it? And then they're coming out again. Right, go back in. Right yeah, yeah, go. Before it crushes you. Now, let's discuss taxis. Taxis come in several different flavors, but the main two are the regular, which comes in orange, white, or silver. Then there are the deluxe taxis, which are black and have nicer seats, but cost almost double. These taxis all have a base fare just to arrive, and additional fare will be added depending on the distance. Rates also go up after curfew, which is 10pm in Korea. You can grab a taxi at taxi stands. They're usually located at train stations, bus terminals, or shopping centers. The only problem is a lot of times if you're just on a street, taxis don't typically stop for you, but at a train station, they're all lined up here. What I found out later is that most people use apps to call taxis. The popular one to download is the Kakao Taxi app. You start by choosing the taxi icon. Then enter the current location and the location you wish to go to. I would screenshot the destination address to show the driver upon arrival. And then you'll get a list of taxis available in the area. Then select the pay the driver option which means you'll pay the driver when you reach your destination. You can't prepay because you need a Korean bank account for that. Finally, take a note of your estimate just in case the driver tries to rip you off. Oh, come on! Korea, the taxis come within 5 minutes, so be prepared to hop in. An important etiquette to remember is to sit diagonal from the driver if you're alone, and only sit in front if the back seats are all full. Show the driver the address you have taken a screenshot of, then laser focus on this little device. This thing calculates the amount of dough you'll be losing. My final tip is to always pay your fare with a credit card or a tea money, and make sure you get the receipt. If you file a dispute with the Korean Tourism Complaint Line, you'll need some hardcore evidence. We've only had to take the taxi once, and that was in the city of Chuncheon. In Chuncheon, the trains come very slow, and the bus system is super confusing and expensive. So it's a lot cheaper many times to just take a taxi, and way more convenient. I didn't know about the app, and we weren't near any taxi stands. So I actually saw someone leaving a taxi, and I just flagged it down. I showed him my hotel on my Google Maps app, and we were on our way. The guy could have totally swindled us, but he turned out to be a super honest ajashi. God really protected us that day. Okay, so if you need to travel around the country, and it's pretty far, you might want to look into the CoRail website, there's an English one, it's called letscoreal.com. I was able to book my tickets to go to Legoland, Daegu, and Busan through this website. It's always better to pre-purchase your tickets through the website, but you can also get them at the station. They have a main ticket window where there's an attendant or you can get it at the ticket kiosk. The fastest trains to purchase are the KTX and ITX. To get a sense of the speed, the KTX goes at about 305 km an hour, while the ITX goes at 165 km an hour. Both these trains only stop at major stations and it's the quickest way to travel the country. Before the KTX and ITX, there was a Semmel Hall which has been in operation since 1969. It only stops at major stations, it's cheaper than KTX and ITX, but much slower. The travel time is almost double. Then finally, there's a Mugunghua Ho, which is the slowest train, but it stops at more stations. 
It was also designed for standing passengers, so if you have a long commute, it might be better to avoid this one. And if time is of no concern, you can book a tourist train. These trains are labeled as O train, V train, and S train. They travel to different areas of the country, and you can even throw parties inside. During our stay in Korea, we booked the ITX to Chuncheon and KTX to Daegu and Busan. But once you have your tickets, you need to get over to the train station. At the station, check for your departure time. These schedules only show departures within the next hour. Alright guys, so I bought these tickets for ITX. I'm at the station right now and we have to enter this gate and the way I was able to get in because I don't have a a, um, a ticket for Jen is I have to scan the QR code here into this area and that allows us to gain access into the station. We were at the Yongsan station and our train shared the same line as a subway car. It goes in on the same track as this metro uh, but here it is ITX right there and that's car one and seat one and I'm car one and I'm I'm seat one or or maybe that's the row seat number one so this is the area that we have to enter just be very careful um, not to get lost definitely make sure that you come here one hour earlier because it's very confusing especially if you've never rode the rail line before the trains only wait for a few minutes, so get on as quickly as possible. As you enter, your seat number should be clearly labeled above each row. It kind of feels like being on an airplane. Very exciting. And you can actually eat here. A little table. It's a very clean car. And this thing goes up and down. You can hang your clothes on this hanger right there. You have a hanger. And above each row, there's a place to put your luggage. And if you want to rest, you can recline the seat a little bit. Once the train is moving, just sit back and enjoy the view. Look, they're already fast asleep. So adorable. Also make sure you pay attention to the screen. It announces the next stop. Well, that was a short one and a half hour ride. It's time to grab all our stuff and leave. Okay. We are here in Chuncheon. Uh, let's uh, go down the stairs. Huh? We thought we were in Chuncheon. I think it's going to be the next stop. Yeah, we got off on the wrong one. Luckily, Dylan saw. Okay, well, he just let me through. But uh, normally, when you exit, you gotta scan your QR code from there on your ticket to exit. All right, let's go. Let's go to the bathroom. For the KTX, there's a special subway car that takes you to the station. Wow, oh, the KTX station is really big. Just like the station in Yonsan with ITX. And this KTX train station here is huge. I don't know if you can see how big it is. Let me use the people for scale. So we gotta look at this timetable here, see which train we take. But it looks like we might be a little bit early. That's okay, John, because it gives us ample time to sample Steph hot dogs. Known as Steph Holberg in Denmark, the fast food chain was rebranded when it launched in Korea about 20 years ago. The company operates 5,000 stores and sales counters worldwide and has established itself as a renowned hot dog brand. Steph Hot Dogs makes use of traditional Danish pork sausages which are directly imported from Denmark. There were some really unique items on their menu such as the pepperoni pizza dogs, chili chicken mayo hot dogs, and bulgogi hot dogs. These seem like specialty items you can only get in Korea. Well, because it's the first time eating here, I decided to go with the original Steph hot dog and we got the cheddar cheese dogs for the kids. Yeah, this is a perfect hot dog for kids because the bun wraps around the whole sausage. So it's not as um, messy. 
And here's my Steph dog. This is the original Steph dog. Oh. It comes with a little holder too. A little hot dog holder. Like that. So I'm gonna see how this Steph hot dog tastes. The original. Mm. I like it. They put crispy onion flakes. We got some relish in there. The mustard, ketchup. I think there might be some cheese in there too. Mm. This kind of tastes like a Polish, but almost like a Polish sausage. Ellie only wants to have the sausage, so then I'm left with eating a whole. Let's see how much the how the whole tastes. <laughs> Cheese bread. I'm left with eating two holes. Cheese holes. Eh, this one has a sausage in it. And I got myself a sweet potato and some yogurt to drink. So I'm, I'm set for lunch. The closest thing to a Steph hot dog in the States is the Wiener Schnitzels. But the food here is definitely way better. I guess Korea wins again in the food department. Anyways, it's time to catch our train. Looks like we only have about an hour left before our train comes. We're in car six. And our family is just waiting in this lounge area. The interior is pretty nice. Also, I had no recollection of this, but I think I might be having a mini seizure. They also provide some official KTX reading material to pass the time. The trays are also much bigger than in the ITX. You can recline the seats here as well. A lot of people traveled light so there was plenty of space in the overhead compartments for luggage. On this trip, we made our first stop to the city of Daegu. I'd like to introduce our new friend. Hi. Hi Taiko Robot. We spent about three nights here before we went to Busan. We're here getting ready or waiting to take the train to Busan. And there's Nolan getting all tired. All right, seems like we just hopped onto a train and um, our, seats, our seats appear to be available. So hopefully we're going to Busan, not Pohang. And then at Busan, we were there for four more days before heading back over to Seoul. We had a train late in the afternoon, so we had a few hours to kill after checkout. So in order to comfortably walk around the city, we checked our baggage into Jim Carrey. Alrighty then. Not that one. This one. Okay, so we're here at the Busan station. And uh, the lockers over there are absolutely full. Can't put any more in there. And then right next to the lockers is this place. The prices is, is more expensive, but it's the only choice we have. Our uh, train leaves around 7, 7 p.m., so we've got no choice. Basically, after you check in your bags at that place, they give you this, this card. So then we're gonna pick our luggage up at 6 p.m. Okay, so now that you're a master of the Korean public transit system, it's time to go out there and get lost. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, here's some more suggestions. On this channel, I make entertaining informational videos about Korea. If that's your thing, please consider subscribing. And with that, I'll see you on the next Pixx in Korea.